Well, hello, hello, YouTube modeling community. Robert Bishop from RB Model Works coming at you. Um, I know it's been a while. I apologize. Uh, did a lot of testing on the paint stripper lately and then uh, had another chest cold, so I just didn't really feel like doing it. I did take a progress video of this last week and I have no idea what I did with it. Uh, uploaded it to my laptop and I cannot find it. So we're going to start over. I'm almost done with it, but we're going to start over anyway. So uh, it's a 429. Uh, just painted it steel. And then uh, got some pulleys on there from off the sprue. Uh, Mark Dunlop up in Canada. Does some great stuff. Uh, Fireball Model Works Carb. The distributor is also from Mark up at uh, Off the Sprue. Uh, I do have, you can see them here, I do have a bunch of little uh, blue spark plug boots for that. Uh, see, I got a bunch of little shocks and stuff. When I strip these, these are the shock mounts that go on the uh, top of the leaf spring shackle. Um, one side broke off of both of them. Very strange. So I got to figure out how to get those fixed up. Um, you know, kind of typical MC or MPC chassis. Uh, they take a lot of work to get them to work um underneath um these chassis pans just almost don't fit together there's about a 32nd of an inch uh so to kind of help that along i uh i put these two um frame rail extensions they're not in there in the kit but it helped to uh keep that straight uh, i guess you could look at it right side up but just to keep that line straight you can see right there how much line is touching on that so it just right out of the barrel you gotta show some patience on this <laughs> And then uh, I added some strip styrene down in here uh, to fill in the hole. Um, use some little cutout discs to kind of simulate the uh, uh, shifter boots that they use back here for the uh, for the shocks coming up through the floor. Then I put some, uh, you can see I put extra bracing in here and around the tunnel. Um, this is an electronic plate off of Salvino's. And then if you recall on these kits, this top piece here, this, you look at it from behind. You can see it is two pieces. But what I did is, um, I body worked it. I cut it out so this uh, fits on top of the firewall. And then I glued it together and I body worked it. But in doing so, I cleaned up. You know, there's always those little lines that run on there. What I did is I just went ahead and glued some some wires back on there. and So it kind of looks halfway decent. Um these are uh, Salvino Charger 125th wheels. And they are monogram 124th tires. But they fill the wheel well up nice. I just like them. Um, and then the hub, you can see uh, very carefully uh, I pinned the wheel to the hub 
but it, it, you can see that uh, from the front where the, the line of the hub here is below center. That's about center of the tire. That's where I've got the hub down below here. You have to do that to get the, the proper ride height. Um, and then the front cage, I just cut off. It'll butt directly up against the wall. Um, you can also see I had to scratch build the cage. Um, this, like the Polar Lights kit, the uh, these hoops go in so far that there's no way in heck you're gonna get the uh, that 429 stuffed in there. But doing it this way it fits in there perfectly with room to spare and then uh, kind of fix the dash I put a little riser back here about a sixteenth of an inch and then I cut out a piece of uh, point zero one zero styrene sheet to create a, a dash cover just so that will bring it up Let's see if I can get that in there there we go yeah just so it brings the dash up uh, a little farther and then looking at uh, I just I've always hated these headers that they throw in the kit they're ridiculous so I was looking and what I found was that Salvino's these are from the charger kit from the 426 Hemi it's the one with the flanges these fit up in there perfect both sides the angle of the headers everything fits perfectly in there so big surprise um Working on uh, some shading on the front grill. You can see I got uh, bodies all painted. These are yesterday decals, an old set. Um, they didn't have, they don't have the uh, gold foil 21s. So what I did is I've got, uh, I've got about 10 sets of Neil Bonnet's number 21 square bird. I just uh, used three of those. And then uh, you can see I'm getting my chrome, chrome foil on there. I love this stuff. What I'm using um, is this mirror finish by Hasegawa. It's super thin, uh, it looks great. Um, uh, and it's very, very tacky. Unlike the last two sheets of bare metal foil that have just not been tacky at all. So I'm getting real close on this. Uh, I was going to wait, but since I couldn't, uh, find my other video I did, I figured, well, better just do an update video real quick. Um, but yeah, I love the look of the 72 Mercury. Um, yeah, I've got two more up there. I think I need two or three more. Um, you know, because uh, three is not enough. I think I have decals for about five. Um, but that's, that's about it. Um, got my shocks all painted up. What I did was I sp split the bottoms. So when I go to put them on, all I have to do is just put that up and slide them in there. And you can't even tell that they're split. So that's about it for right now for AJ Foyt's 72 Mercury. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, give it a like or dislike, thumbs up, share. Uh, leave me a comment. I always appreciate it. And uh, it's a pleasure responding. Um, it's been great getting up to 600 uh, uh, subscribers. I truly appreciate 
uh, you guys sticking around and watching this stuff. Uh, I'm not the best at doing videos, I know that, but I appreciate you hanging out anyway with me. God bless, and uh, hopefully you're not getting snow like we are today. You guys stay safe.